Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the Tom Murphy Show. Uh, we are now in June of 2018. The summer is upon us. And tonight I have two very special guests, uh, two chief elected officials uh, of our neighboring communities, uh, friends of the village of Mamaroneck, Nancy Seligson, the supervisor of the town of Mamaroneck, Lorraine Walsh, the mayor of Larchmont. I think we have to face the elephant in the room here. Mm -hmm. Why aren't there more middle-aged men elected officials? <laughs> stop, stop beating that dead horse, Tom. <laughs> when's when's a, a white middle-aged guy going to get a break around here? <laughs> you know, I, I just, you know, the village of Mamaroneck is starting a food waste recycling uh, program on June 23rd. I know you folks have been doing it now for a while. Can you talk about the experiences in the town and the village of Largemont? Right. Well, uh, the, town, the, yeah, the town and the village of Largemont share. We have the Largemont Mamaroneck Joint Sanitation Commission, I think, for, uh, wow. Since the 30s. Since the 30s. Um, but we've done food waste composting um, for about six months now, eight months? September 18th. Wow, I somehow remember flies, the date. Yeah. yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. um, and it's going very well. I know Nancy has like a lot of the um, numbers in her head. <laughs> but um, to, I believe that we are collecting something on the order of 24,000 pounds per week, per month, per week. Um, it's about 12 trash yes, cans it is. per week. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, about yes. 24,000 pounds a week at this of point. Of food recycling. Of food waste, yeah. And, and, and sometimes it is actually more than that when there are special events in the community that are held as um, uh, zero waste events. And we are looking into possibly picking up food waste from some of the schools, which would be uh, Chatsworth Avenue mm -hmm. School, uh, Murray, Murray Avenue School. Central. Um, I don't know if we've talked to them yet. It's, it depends on the school because they've got to be willing to right. participate in, in making sure the food is separated right. out appropriately. Because as we all know, the kids, uh, there's a lot of lunches that get thrown out. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and I believe um, one of, at least one of the restaurants in Larchmont is in discussion with. Yes. Potentially. They are. Yeah. The, um, we have about 400, or we think more than 400 uh, families participating. Uh, right now, and, and this is all voluntarily. It is yes. a volunteer mm -hmm. program, yeah. Yeah. and we don't pick up curbside at this point in time. So, right. um, anyone who's participating in the program either brings their uh, compost to the Maxwell Avenue facility, um, or they can bring it to the Larchmont Farmers Market on Saturdays before 10:30 in the morning. Now, I noticed that at one point, I think a couple of weeks ago, I saw a story that uh, they were they were starting to give away compost yes. to folks. So we did. Um, we the compost currently, or the food waste currently, goes up to um, a facility in Connecticut where it's turned into compost. And we purchased some back to be able to give back to the residents okay. to show them what it really turns into, right. which is incredibly rich, nutrient-rich uh, nutrient yeah. compost for mm -hmm. your gardens. And it was successful. We had lots of folks come in and fill up pails to, or big cartons to use in their gardens. But the great thing about the food waste program is that it is reducing our solid waste overall right. because it's about 30% of the waste stream. Wow. And since our waste goes up to um, peak scale to be burned and food waste is about uh, mostly water, uh, burning water is not efficient. So it's a good <laughs> right. thing to take it out right. of the food sure. waste stream mm -hmm. and it's it's a good thing to take waste and turn it into and something it, it's, valuable. It's less uh, trips and trucks up to peak scale too. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's expensive, though. Right. I have to say, uh, we've learned that um, having it picked up, and it's currently picked up by one company, is expensive, um, more expensive than getting rid of it as if it was just regular garbage. garbage. Well, you know, now we have a more forward-thinking county executive, so maybe the the county will take over That's the. That's the hope. Uh, well, it's our hope. Yeah. It's our hope, but um, it's it's. <laughs> we'll leave it at that so you're right now. The conversation. It's our we have. Right. And, and I think, you know, as, as all, all other um, sustainable technologies have gone, so too will this. It'll get, yes, it'll get cheaper, know, cheaper and, and there'll be more options and more facilities as we move But along. people are so excited about it. I, I have love to it. say yeah. that it's the, the most exciting, <laughs> yeah. or people are the most excited about this program of any program I've ever seen. I, I, you know, when I was uh, campaigning in the past election, people talked to me about when's the village going to do what the town is doing. And, you know, and, 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 so I, I, I 
predict that there's going to be uh, you know, a big groundswell in the 23rd in the Village of America. There's, there's this pent-up desire for it. Correct. Yeah, I right. even heard the other day that some village residents sneak in to yeah. get rid of their compost <laughs> into the town. We don't I check IDs right? <laughs> Which is, point. You know, if it's just a few stragglers, that's yeah. okay. Well, now we'll, take, you know, we'll tell them to come home. Yeah. And we, we're lucky to have really dedicated volunteers who mm -hmm. are very, very strong yes. uh, supporters of it yeah. and also great sanitation Absolutely. folks who are participating. They're very excited about it. And the, the volunteers man the tent at the um, farmer's yes. market every weekend. Oh, that's great. And, you know, answer questions and help the waste go into the right containers. So, so uh, let me get on to another subject that all three of us have to deal with as a municipality. And, you know, I, I, I've dealt with it in the town of Mamaroneck, now I'm dealing with it in the village of Mamaroneck, is... Uh, sewer repair, sewer rehabilitation. It's, it's a huge uh, number that all of us have to face. We're all mm -hmm. mature uh, uh, suburbs. Mature sewers. Mature <laughs> sewers, yes. <laughs> yes. And you know, it, it, it has, has the village of Larchmont done a sewer use fee? To, we have. We, yeah. have a, we have a sewer rent fee. Um, we attach it to our water bill, so it says okay. it's per uh, unit of water used right. is how we charge it out. So that's how we do it. And right. then the net money gets um, uh, put into a segregated sewer fund, right? Um, separate from the general fund, and will only be used for sewer-related uh, projects. Because I think it's important uh, for, for the, the, the populace to know that this is a huge expense that's coming up, and it's an unavoidable expense. It's, I agree. Yes, it's both enormous and unavoidable. Um, and we're working together with the town of Maranac and the village of Pell, I always forget, Pelham or Pell Manor, and, New and the city of New Rochelle, because we're all in the same um, sewage treatment right. uh, plan. You're, you're, the majority of your sewage goes to New Rochelle. But not in the town. We're not in two town. sewer yeah. districts, right. so uh, the majority of the sewer in the town goes, sewage to the goes to the Mamaroneck Valley yeah. Sewer District, which is in uh, you know the Mamaroneck Sewage Treatment Plan in Harbor Island. But we uh, collectively, the four municipalities, spent five point two million dollars on just the study mm -hmm. of the sewer system mm -hmm. before even uh, implementing the any of the repairs. Yeah. Yeah. And now we're looking at you know ten years of repairs and spending several million dollars each year. Each, yeah. The good news is that we did get a state grant for $5.7 million last year to help with the implementation yeah. costs mm -hmm. of the repairs. And I but think it's, it's going to cover maybe 40% or so of the, uh, you know, the yeah. initial upfront costs. But um, I was going to say that the, the, the study that was done and, and completed, um, we had GHD, which was the company who right. did the study, uh, come to the village board meeting and um, show us video and mm. um, photos oh, of, yeah. because they've gone down now mm. and cleaned and videoed just every sewer line in the village and manhole. And it's kind of, you know, it's kind disgusting. Of interesting. <laughs> in, 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 in a it is kind interesting, of way. Yeah, it yeah is. but yeah. it's also, um, but it, it's eye opening because such an old system, mm -hmm. you, you really get to see um, old, all clay the pipes old clay pipes and, yeah. and right. the cracks and the and how yeah. it was originally right. built. Mm -hmm. But I always like to remind folks that as unsexy as sewers might seem, they are the foundation of our basic civilized society. That's right. Because that without correct. sewers, we don't have anything. We don't have anything. You, you, you'll be getting cholera. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, just to talk about inflow and infiltration, one of the, 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 uh, you know, the things that illustrate it the most for me is you know, in Harbor Island Park, there are four pumps. Mm -hmm. And on a regular dry day, one pump operates. In a heavy rain event, all four of those pumps are operating. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it, in theory, that shouldn't have to happen. Right, right, there should right. be nothing getting into getting those into pipes. The sanitary so it's, yeah. it's almost quadrupling what's going into those pipes. Right. And so you know, we, we all have a huge problem. It's, you know, I, just, I always kind of try and bring that into the conversation so people aren't surprised. When, uh, you know, I agree. Because we, we're all hindered by the tax cap, mm -hmm. and you know, we, we, the government wants us, to, the state wants us to stay under two percent or whatever it is, and people are like, well, why but can't you do that? They also want us to take care of they also, yeah, issues they, 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 the sound, and, and, and we're being forced to. Right. You know, forced, the yes. state and the county are forcing us to, which is the right thing it's to do. It's the right do. thing to do. Yes. In terms of Long Island Sound, I mean, the the sewage treatment plan in Mamaroneck runs at a very, very high level, meaning that it does a great job of yes. actually. Uh, cleaning water. Mm -hmm. However, when it is overburdened by excess water, it cannot do that same great job, and that's a problem that's for problem. Long Island Sound. Right. Yeah, there's there's uh, another issue that uh, we all share, and uh, you know, we all derive 
our income for the communities from uh, real estate taxes for the most part. And you know the recent federal government uh, change in law, the $10,000 is the max that you can deduct both for your state income tax and your property tax. Mm -hmm. It's really going to hurt a lot of our residents. Uh, have you guys thought about the governor's plan and uh, passing that law to enable people to deduct you know, their taxes kind of as a charitable expense? Yeah. Um, my board has been discussing this since the, uh, the, the Tax Reform Act was passed. And then as soon as the governor came out with his uh, executive order in the budget. Um, and uh, we were very interested in, in it. Um, and then the state put out guidelines. Um, and then the IRS put out a notice, mm -hmm. which basically put us all on notice to, to say that um, they're going to, well, my reading of it, and I think most people's reading of it, is that it. we're going to disallow it. And, and by the way, we're going to thwart any effort that you try to make. Um, you know, in this area. Um, and then um, I, uh, along with, I know Nancy was there because she was sitting up on the <laughs> dais, but we went to the, um, the Council of Governments meeting at the county center this past week where the governor's economic advisor spoke, um, gave a little, a PowerPoint presentation and then answered many questions. I think there are a lot of um, problems with the concept, and I think um, my board is going to discuss it Monday night at our public meeting. Um, for villages, we'd have to enact the local law and the resolutions um, by July 2nd, mm -hmm. um, which is a, a short, very short time frame. To allow people to deduct the September taxes, right? They're June. June taxes. Okay. June taxes, right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, it, we can talk about the problems with the way it's been set up. Yeah. If you, you well, want to get into that. <laughs> well, I'll just add that in yeah. the town, we also have been discussing it since the federal law changed. Mm -hmm. um, we are planning to discuss it and will be on our agenda for our June 20th meeting. Um, we are going to look at draft legislation. Um, you know, the town has the additional burden of having to mm -hmm. collect school. taxes for the school and the county mm -hmm. and make those whole. And this legislation proposed by the state would require those entities to um, actually collect their own funds through a charitable contribution right. and then somehow convey that information to the town who could then Correct. Uh, uh, it, post it, it for it, their taxes. The plan yeah. wasn't well thought out and it, and it wasn't well constructed. Well, I think what, what I came away from the meeting at the county center with was that um, they looked at some legislation from other states, states. Who, who've done, who have already in the past had similar legislation, Georgia and I think California. Um, I'm not sure that, that thorough consideration was given to the intertwined structure mm. of municipalities and in districts New in yes. New York. I and agree. I think for, for the village, we don't necessarily have this issue, um, but for the town, and, and um, people brought it up at the meeting, there are concerns about fraud because the person who pays into a charitable fund in a school district um, or uh, into a school district or at the <coughs> county level then gets a, a notification or a certification of that charitable donation, which they then present to the tax receiver, which would be the town, for credit on their tax bill. How does the town then um, verify, verify that that's yeah. not a fraudulent document? And so there, there's the need for a lot of right. information to be transferred back and forth. And once which is again, <laughs> they, they don't make allowances for how much that work will cost the local municipality. Well, that's to a whole other issue. Yes. Because how, how, I think what that, is the staffing? That yeah, I don't to... think that folks understand or appreciate the complexity of the software yeah. that currently right. helps us do all the tax uh, payments mm -hmm. receive, right. and receiving of taxes. And we can't in timely fashion and without great, great cost, modify, modify. the software, mm -hmm. which is governed by the state of New York. So that's a major problem. And it, whether this is a manual process or if it's a manual process would be very costly right. as well. So, so we've kind of taken a position, we're gonna wait to see what the federal government says. Uh, but you know, I, I guess I'm of the mind too also, like this is all gonna be litigated. I think you know, right. yeah. it, so this is headed mm -hmm. to court. Right. So I mean, so then it's like if we don't do it and New York State wins, then did we deprive our taxpayers of an ability to get a deduction mm 
Mm -hmm. so it's, it's like the, it's I think you're right. I think that's a concern, that's and I think we concern. all have worked to provide our taxpayer whatever benefit we possibly yes. can. Mm -hmm. So I think, and I think most chief elected officials have been discussing that. No matter how difficult it is, or how unlikely it might be that it will be accepted, I think most are trying to see what they can do to help the residents. You, you kind of feel sometimes like you're a pawn now, right? In, in between these... Uh, oh, without a yeah, doubt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> without a doubt. Yeah. I would say that I'm, at least from the village perspective, I've been getting the impression that most villages are not going to participate at this point in time. Yes. And, yes. and, and two, I would say two, two problems with the way it's worded is that the, the guidelines that came out require the... Uh, certification of the charitable donation um, letter to state that we the, we are not providing any goods and, or yes, services yes, right. in exchange for this donation and I then the question becomes what does a village provide beyond goods and services Sir. so how can we make that affirmation the second point is if the IRS disallows um, They've already given notice, is and they disallow eight, six, eight months from now. It's retroactive to the notice they've already given yeah. us. What effect does that have then on the residents? Yes, we may fight it. New York State can fight it, and let New York State fight the New York State fund, okay? Because they've set up their own charitable fund for the state. Mm -hmm. if, if we go into litigation to fight this, and I know that it's supposed to be quick litigation because it's. Uh, because of the nature of the issue. Um, what damage happens to the resident in terms of their personal income tax return? Their, mm -hmm. right? Are they going to be audited? You know, what are, what are, we, right. what are they think, then putting themselves in line for? I think that we have for? to, so if, if we were to do really, it, we have to have a big caveat to yeah, all, yes. you know, that oh, you know, we, we do not guarantee that you will get a deduction. We don't, or, guarantee, yeah. we don't guarantee you won't be audited. Yes. Yes. <laughs> People are really going to have it's, to check with their own tax without attorneys a, yes. and advisors right. as to whether this yes, makes this, sense this for is, them. This is not a it's slam worth dunk. Whatever risk or yeah. whatever benefit, benefit. is possible. Yeah. yeah. Well, another issue I want to kind of meld together is development in schools. I, I just I think it's important for us to point out to the residents is that we really have no uh, voice in how the schools are run. I, I think you know recently they've been talking about redistricting or you know having a re, you know reassessment of where students go, mm -hmm. and I just want to put that out there that <laughs> the mayor and the supervisors have no say in that because I think a lot of people have moved up from New York City. Where the mayor has a lot of say in right, the school, and right. I know I got phone calls about oh, yes. it. You know, what um, are you going to do about this? And yeah. uh, you know, just, I, just you know, to kind of inoculate Correct. us here <laughs> so that we have no say in that. Sure. Although you know, we we have all sent children through the school system. Right. <clears throat> it's true. I I think that uh, people are getting better educated about that issue and starting to understand yes. it a little better. They have certainly reached out to me. I know they have to both of you to ask me to do something, to uh, get involved, to voice uh, our opinion, to try and help, again, help the residents for a jurisdiction that's doing something that we really don't have any, um, yeah. we don't really have any say in it. Or, or it we don't have any say, in, and also we, we don't have all the information that the school board has. No. You know, we just, no. Yeah. Uh, you know, as I know, <clears throat> in the village of Mamaronek, and, and I think you've had some of this on a much smaller scale, in Larchmont, uh, people you know try and tie the overcrowding to development. And the village of Marion does have a lot of development, and we mm -hmm. we we have a moratorium going on now, and we're really working on that. Uh, but that is not right now affecting the schools so much. I think what we're seeing is a turnover in. Uh, I agree. I think I think by and large, the 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 um, spike in enrollment of the last couple of years can be tied directly to an increase in home sales. Um, I had my um, uh, assessor's office pull together sales information over the last 22 years in the village of Larchmont. And when you graph it, you can see uh, a big spike in house sales that happened in like the 96 to 98 period. Then it kind of dropped and stabilized for a while. Then it went way down in 2008, right after the market crashed. And then um, 2015, a six, 2014, 15, 16, again, it spiked back up. It seems like it's just part of the natural sort of 20-year yes. cycle. I happened to move into Larchmont in the first 
spike mm -hmm. in house sales. <coughs> and I remember my street, which is a 14 house dead end street in the village. Um, on that street, there were, of the 14, only two homes that were still had the older family with the grown kids. Everybody yeah. else on the block the empty was a yeah. new family um, with young school age or almost school age kids who had moved up from the city or from other parts you know, of the I, I, I campaigned I this year, I was knocking on doors, mm -hmm. and it was, if they had little kids, yeah. and uh, it was almost invariably, I, I'd say, where would you move from? The Upper West Side, Brooklyn. 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 Yeah. <laughs> it's like a migratory path yeah. Yeah, that oh, they're yeah. all following. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Exactly. You know, they, they get the kids at three or four, they start thinking about schools. Yeah. You know, they might get to play the Russian roulette or the city school system. Mm -hmm. or they're going to pay private there. tuition, yeah. et cetera. Exactly. So I do think we have seen that cyclical yeah. uh, change. And I think that um, the school district has also explained to us that they do see influxes of new people as well, and they can't really predict. I mean, I think that's one of the big frustrations, is that they haven't yeah. been able to predict it. And the predictions they had and projections were, were, were right, really wrong. Right. And so that has frustrated them and, of course, all of us. You know, it, it, true. I have provided um, the Village of Larchmont's home sales data to the, to the school superintendent and have offered to provide that to him. I, I assume he could get it on his own, but maybe it's easier if we just mm -hmm. present it in, yeah. in a table. And I and I offered to pr provide that to him every six months, um, and then perhaps the new families who've moved in every six months, the school could send a postcard and say, you know, what do you think about their school enrollment? Like they did, I believe, a couple of months back to sort of gauge right. yeah. they did. where things were going to go. And that might be a more realistic way for them to have a, a touchstone in terms of where population is going for the school. That's a good idea. Um, I, other than that, I mean, um, we had one, we had, um, one condominium, affordable housing condominium, um, which I think 15 years. It was on the planning board before I even right. became a trustee. Between um, Palmer and the railroad. Be, yeah, yeah. Uh, on Palmer Avenue. And it, it opened and sold um, all in one mm -hmm. year. And so, of course, that, was that also point. added a lot of kids in that one year mm -hmm. into the system. That's not something that happens on a regular basis where, you know, every right. unit in a, in a, in right. a complex sells the same year. And, you know, we, we're going to have other than that, we're close to 200 units opening up in the next year. Right. So that's going to happen. You know, and, and what happens too is you know, these these planners uh, when when they're talking about the units when they build, oh, there won't be that many kids. Blah, blah, blah. But a lot of times, what happens now is uh, if a family has separated, uh, one parent will buy a place in uh, mm -hmm. a place with a good school system, and then their kids could go to school. And, and they don't take into account that uh, the, that dynamic when they're doing the planning. You know, it's true. I think that well, the planning for how many school children will result from certain kinds of development is, inaccurate. is has not been accurate. Yeah. And I think it's yeah. evolving and changing. Exactly. Right. So right. we As see families it change. change. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think that our school district, you know, I tease Dr. Shapps, the superintendent, that they should do a less good job in the school <laughs> <Right>. district. Because, <laughs> not at all out. <laughs> because it be is such a desirable district. Mm -hmm. And so that people do want to get a foot in the door in our sure. school district. Yeah, so, I, I, I'm just sorry. so everybody out there knows that um, we we do meet with the school, yes, both the Marinex school. school district and the um, Rhinex school district um, superintendent and others from from those districts, um, four times a year, um, and we share with them information about right. developments that are happening, and and they share with us their information. So there is an interchange, and we do let them know what's going on. When I became mayor, I. I, I, I instructed the planning department to make sure that any new development, uh, the, the school district was an interested party, so yeah. that they would see it you know, and have right. the ability to comment, mm -hmm. which they weren't getting before. You know, we, we have a few minutes left. I just want to briefly touch on shared services, because we do share a lot of services, and uh, we don't get the credit we deserve uh, from <laughs> We certainly don't, we don't from the no. state. No, no. no. no it, it, Nancy, uh, the town and the village and lodgements share the. Uh, so we have the Joint Sanitation Commission. Right, that you both the, yes, share. Yes. And for the two, and we have a Joint Coastal Zone Management Commission. Right. But the town administers the ambulance district for the three municipalities. Right. Mm -hmm. The town administers the Section 8 program and the senior right. services, right. community mm -hmm. services right. for the three municipalities. Mm -hmm. And of course, the recreational facilities in the town are open to all three municipalities. And I think a lot of people in, in both Lodgemont and the village 
of Merrick do avail themselves yeah, of I the hope town's so. recreation. Yeah, 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 definitely. Especially Certainly the pool. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, especially the pool. And we also um, share a library. We absolutely Don't forget. do. That's right. we should, oh the Largemont goodness. Library is, yeah. is co-funded by the town and village. Now, do you, do you have any, uh, any, any desires to do any more shared services or anything you think we can work on? We're always looking at it. We also share animal control. Oh, that's right. That's a new one. <laughs> that's a new right. one. Same I think that's eleven thousand dollars. Right. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Small, but it's a, yeah. I think there's probably lots of opportunity out there yeah. for some shared services. I mean, we've occasionally <coughs> done road paving um, and mm -hmm. curb and sidewalk contracts together. Right. I mean, that seems like an area where we could uh, try to band together and get get better pricing. We do also in the town uh, provide some services to uh, the garbage trucks in the, ta in the village That's of correct. Larchmont. We have a contract with them. So because we have a, a fairly large um, town yard and mechanics area uh, that we're able to service some of the trucks. Mm -hmm. And I know all three village managers, uh, town uh, administrator Steve Altieri, Rob Yamuda, and Jason, they all, Justin, Justin <laughs> I'm sorry, they, they all talk to each other a lot and they all share information. and. Right. Uh, so there, there machinery is machinery occasionally machine, when yes. something breaks, a truck, a, fi a fire yeah. truck. Yep. Yes. yes. <laughs> and we, I know we're borrowing your tree truck mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. So we, you know, because we're sister municipalities and we all are trying to work together and help one another, I think there is the opportunity in any emergency crisis sure. or need situation and to obviously our fire department is all supporting Right, we all have. Right. Our police, I saw town of Mamaroneck and village of Mamaroneck police on post road uh, taking care of something the other night. So there's, there's a good working relationship. Yeah, there yeah, is. Yeah, Thank yeah, goodness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we, we have a couple of minutes left. Is there anything about your communities uh, that you want the public to know while we have a minute left here? Uh, well, we, it's summertime, so we have our outdoor summer concerts coming up in July, and we have two outdoor movies. The concerts are on Monday nights, which is great, and everyone's excited about that. The food compost, food waste composting is open and available to anyone who'd like to participate. Um, and we're embarking on a comprehensive plan update also. Very nice. Yeah. Right. Um, well, likewise, we have our summer concert st series, which starts on the 4th of July after the 4th of July races, which is our yeah. annual event at Flint Park, which is a lot of fun. That and is hot a lot walks of fun. And yes. Hot dogs and, and water balloons and all kinds of things. And the truck sprays. And, uh, well, the we haven't done the truck spray in a while, not since we blew out. The water <laughs> line. <laughs> <laughs> so then we turn the sprinklers on sometimes. Okay. Um, uh, we also have a, a movie in the park that the Larchmont Fire Department is going to be sponsoring in September. We are hopefully going to be embarking on a, a renovation of Constitution Park yes. uh, in the late fall. There's a group, Friends of Larchmont Parks, fundraising for that. Another group, the Turtle Park Project, is fundraising for a renovation of the Turtle Park Playground. They have an event actually this Saturday evening, if I can put a plug for sure that. You can. It's called Tailgate for Turtle and mm -hmm. Kegs for a Cause. And it's basically a beer and pizza party in Turtle Park. Okay, <laughs> ladies, I have to wrap up, but thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I look forward to working with you both in the future. Yes. And uh, enjoy your summer. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, you too. too.